change, yeah. they're changing the uh, lights. Ooh. Can you guys keep cycling them? Oh, ah, oh, damn, they got those LGBT <laughs> lights. So <laughs> Prevo is making the... Uh, I've been asking for that for so long. I mean, I need pretty light. What is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. The 2024 redesigned Prevo H345 definitely took the spotlight at the Motor Coach Expo Show down in Orlando, Florida. Now, if you haven't had a chance to check out the last two videos I made about what goes on in one of these bus conventions and the live coverage of the Prevo H345 unveiling, definitely take the time to go check those out. Those were really cool. Many of you sent me a lot of great questions during my live stream in the comment section, and I definitely didn't forget about you. Now, while I was down in Orlando, Florida, I had the opportunity to do an exclusive Q&A, as well as an in-depth tour of the redesigned 2024 model Prevo H345 with the president of Prevo himself, Mr. Francois Tremblay, as well as Prevo's product expert, Mr. Jeffrey Lemieux, and Keith Hayward, who is a regional sales executive of Prevo. Now, between the three of these guys, I got a lot of awesome in-depth details about the new H345, as well as answers to some of the questions you guys asked me down in the comments. Now, I didn't have enough time to address all of the questions from everyone, so I apologize ahead of time if I didn't get to your question, but rest assured that this is not the last video I'll be doing on this beautiful new bus. Oh, and also I touched on a particularly touchy subject that many of you mentioned down in the comments below. Does the H345 resemble the MCI J4500? And why I thought it kind of did. Now, before you guys start losing your cool, it's okay, guys. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Anyways, check out what the president of Prevo had to say about it when I actually brought it up to him. So without further ado, enjoy the tour. This is Francois Tremblay, the president of Prevo, and here I have Jeffrey. And what do you do for the company? Product I'm expert. a product expert, helping the, the sales guy. For product expert? Yeah. Awesome. And then this is Keith Hayward. And regional manager. Regional yeah. manager yep. and sales, right? That's correct. Okay. So if you want a Prevo, talk to this guy, he'll sell you. <laughs> He's the man, exactly. First of all, this is a beautiful Prevo. I, I love the redesign. When I live streamed it yesterday, the most, I got so many comments by people that it looks like an MCI J model. Um, some joked and call it the, hey, it's the new MCI H345, or hey, it's the new Prevo J4500. Um, and so, because it was so chaotic here, I couldn't wrap my head around why it looked that way. So last night, as I was looking through pictures between the Prevo and MCI, the one thing I noticed, Prevos had always uh, kept their frame square. Whereas MCIs, when it got to the driver and the door area, they tapered in. I finally clicked last night that that square that Prevo always maintained is now gone. And what that did for me was the, the, the appeal of Prevo when it stood next to a MCI of Van Hool was that it was so massive. It is bigger, it's the tallest coach out of the two. It's 12.4, whereas the J model is 11.10 and the Van Hool is 11.6 but it's that extra couple inches on each side that didn't taper in that added to that massiveness, you know, that made drivers turn their heads when it was next that, to them. That's that classic, what we call the classic Prevo look. Yes. Just knew that was a Prevo. So yes. A glimpse of that. That's kind of gone now. You know, there's so much ways you can improve aerodynamics, right? Either you can play on the horizontal or the vertical curvature, right? So that's kind of why we had to optimize the shape to really improve uh, the ergonomic, the aerodynamics, which led actually up to 12% better fuel efficiency. Because we have to find a way to reduce operational costs for operators because, you know, those coaches, you know, with everything happening post-pandemic, price are going up, it's tough, you know? So we have to find creative ways to offset that by reducing operational Cost. So that's why you know we went in that direction, you know, to really create value. And I don't think it was a bad direction to go. I, th I think it's just beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So people are gonna have to get used to that oh, it's uh, exactly about the Prevo. Yeah. But the dash is a lot cleaner. It's easier to use. A lot of people ask about the cup holders, <laughs> um, and so a lot of people are happy to see that. Hey, there's a. I don't have to choose between air conditioning or having yeah, yeah, a drink yeah. anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
One question is, will Prevo ever enter the Australian market? The, yeah, that's a really good question, but actually the fact that we're part of the Volvo group, you know, we have to keep that in mind, right? Because in Australia, for instance, we're covered by Volvo coaches. So that's why we're not going to compete against ourselves in those markets. And for us, it's also to be able to be able to service the, 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 the product and everything. So that's why we want to keep it more North American based. That being said, we exported some motor homes, you know, in the uh, UAEs and uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, but it was more of a motor home uh, uh, Prevo uh, for the sheets actually. But oh. besides that, actually we're not uh, planning to go uh, outside of North America because this is more Volvo coaches territory. So you don't want to compete against Volvo, uh, Volvo exactly, in, in is, Australia. Exactly, because we're part of the same uh, So some might right, ask, so. aren't you competing against Volvo here because there's Volvo and Prevo? That's a, that's a really good point. Uh, you know, you have to understand that all globally, Volvo is always positioned as the premium coach sure. in the market. North America, that's the only sec exception in the Volvo world where they have a, a brand, another brand actually, that is more premium than Volvo, which is Prevo. And us, for us in North America, we're using Volvo more as an entry point uh, with our business, right? So, because that's why it's priced actually uh, almost uh, over $100,000 uh, cheaper than a Prevo mm -hmm. because you know it's easier uh, acquisition costs and everything so that's why we kind of differentiated that kind of using the Volvo as an entry point in the category or within the Prevo family mm -hmm. and after that typically you would see operators migrating towards a, a Prevo. Well we start seeing an e-version of the H345. Of course. We already announced last year that we're working uh, on the electrification program and we're planning right. to release uh, in uh, 26, so early 26, so that's uh, definitely in the works right now. Is as it going to be on a H345 chassis? Yeah, no, right now we're looking at exactly doing it on the H3. Okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah, not yeah, the yeah, X, right. not that, but it's going to yeah, be on yeah, it. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so when Prevo so. comes out with all electric, it'll look like yeah, that on exactly. the H. Right. Did you redesign the entire frame? To build this, I know it's a redesign. But we're redesigning the frame because if you look at it, we even actually reduce the number of uh, window posts uh, by about 15%. So to have actually larger windows, I didn't notice standard that. windows. Now the, all the, the windows will be are standard and uh, the, and the larger. Of course, this one because there's a wheelchair lift, it's a bit of a different. But normally, all side windows would be standard size, and uh, that creates better visibility. So as we add also, there's new regulation coming in with rollover requirements. So that's why we had to uh, replay within uh, with our structure so yes we did actually uh, play with the overall uh, so it's a basically structure. a new chest new structure it's a structure system. because of reinforcement wow. and also new design because you saw with the tapered mm -hmm. angle in the front and everything and the uh, and the curvature on the, the windshield and everything yes we had to uh, retouch the overall uh, structure yes. so is, is there one less window Plane, pain now? Do you guys one, one less, it's one less yeah, window one, pain one, because exactly. now it's larger one. Okay. We used to have a smaller one at the back and uh, a small one. Yeah, this one. Okay. Is, you move one, one bigger and the rest is all the same. But I gotta tell you, this one was a heck of a challenge to produce. You know, it's 54% larger than our previous window. We call it the trapezoidal window. I'll and call it, it a what? Uh, trapezoid, trapezoid uh, window. Trapezoid, exactly. It's always uh, a trapezoid you know, Exactly because of the shape and everything. But this one is great because it increased visibility from the inside, bring more light, natural light in the coach itself. And it gives it also a nice design features also. Do you think Prevo will ever incorporate other engine options aside from the Volvo or well, our next engine option would be an electric engine, right? Okay. So, but when you're talking, if you're referring specifically to diesel, no. I mean, we okay. d we decided when we decided to go back with Volvo only. I think you know I wanted to standardize with the rest of the company, and I gotta tell you. All the feedbacks I've got, you know, uh, everybody, all the operators feel that we have a bulletproof engine. The Volvo powertrain is really solid, so so exactly, we're going to stick with our... Awesome. We were discussing earlier, we had basically in mind to uh, cater to three different, you know, uh, external customers. We had the operator, which is started one buying the coach. We had the driver in mind, and we had the passenger. So for the operator, for us, it was about all about reducing their total cost of ownership. So the biggest feature is the redesign to make it much more aerodynamics. 
which again delivered up to 12% better fuel efficiency. But it's about serviceability, so you'll notice all the different little serviceability features like the front trunk, enlargement of the uh, uh, side service door, things like this, right? You have easier access to parts to do faster repair time. When it comes to the driver, we redesigned a complete driver environment, mm -hmm. you know, integrating a new steering wheel, a new cluster. New cup uh, holder. Exactly, new cup holder, <laughs> important, let's mention it. Uh, we have the new digital screen where you have everything on one screen with uh, GPS, 360 cameras, uh, backup cameras and everything. Uh, you know, and even the cluster now, you it tells you if the a luggage bay door is open and which one it is. You know, little things like this to improve the driving experience and visibility. I've mentioned it, we reduce the A post and actually with the curvature now, you have much better visibility mm -hmm. for drivers when they are driving in an urban environment. And lastly, for the passenger, you see we redid the, the inside the parcel rack. We enlarge, you know, the, the roof within the inside in terms of so when you enter it looks much, you know, more more open. Uh, we actually have, of course, new lighting system, white, you know, a dyno white. Have color here. change now. Color change. Yeah. We redesign also, you know, slightly seven percent wider entrance also. So These the entrance is wider. Yes, seven by about seven percent. Wow. And also we change the uh, the the uh, the, uh, the curvature design of the to make it more. It's of no natural. longer just an L. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's a more natural flow when you're entering the coach. So little things like that and of course our new uh, cloud seats which are actually one of our own design that we work with Amaya to have design of developing but this is actually our own uh, design that we developed. It took us two years to really work on optimizing the comfort and mm -hmm. the design of that seat. So we wanted to have a great seat that you know was matching the rest of the design of the vehicle. You, know? uh, you have here new LED uh, headlights that will be the most powerful on the market. So also integrated uh, a turn signal. Uh, we also remove one docking light that is replaced on the side of the, the bus. One of the great features that we added is the uh, front axle uh, access panel to give you access to all the component behind. So defro uh, defroster, also uh, wiper uh, motors, some electrical component. So that way you don't have to pull the dash out to make maintenance on this. Oh, you now yeah. have access to your, your uh, filter. defroster filter. You have both. Uh, so there's nothing to unscrew, nothing to pop nothing. out. It's just a button or a latch that yeah, you, exactly. beautiful. That's brilliant. Perfectly sealed, so no water will go on. We redesigned the bumper. So now we have it's a three-piece three piece bumper. So if a driver uh, scratch one, you don't have to replace the, the full bumper. Then we change the entry, uh, the uh, service door access, bigger access for maintainability. We uh, change the place for that uh, driver window now in here. So if you have any problem oh my gosh, this with comes the opening, out. yeah, the driver's window pops out with this panel. Yeah, and you you just have to unscrew this this panel and you have access to all the mechanics you don't have to remove a part of the dash to get access wow. to this and then we improve also uh, the uh, washer uh, windshield washer tank now it's got a bigger uh, windshield washer tank less filling then we have a big access so this is a really good comment that we have from mechanics that now they have the full access to the uh, electrical component, very easy. They can bring their computer, probe everything. Uh, Parts-wise, are a lot of the parts from the old model H345 interchangeable with this? Yes, some of the ECU will be, uh, you can swipe them. Okay. So the multiplex system is very reliable on the, on the bus. So when you were saying the design compared to uh, MCI, yeah. we wanted to have like a, a bold look. When you have those lights, you're, you're having that, that black uh, trim in the middle and also that goes all the way to the side. Also on the back, we, we've done the, the rear uh, cap. So now yeah. that's helping the, the airflow, the drag of the bus to help the drag yeah. of the vehicle. And this is going to be the 2024 model, correct? Exactly. Not the 20. And yep. when will these start hitting hitting the market? Uh, when will you start selling these? Or selling is it available them, right now? Uh, we will probably deliver one next week. Uh, okay, so people customers. can already buy the 2024 model as of January of 2023. Buy it? No, because they're already sold for almost next year's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this so, camera right yep. here, here we, we added the 
we integrated into the, 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 the plastic uh, shape uh, a place where you can have a scenic view camera. So if you take that option, you can run the, the video. Uh, oh, the passengers what, can the, watch it on the screen? Yeah, the they can, they can that, see yeah. the road on the screen. That is brilliant. So, the, But this is, a, you, this is an option, you have to ask for it. Yeah, it's an option. But if you ask for it, you can flip a switch. Dennis, you can flip a switch, and this camera right here will appear on all the screens of the coach, giving the passengers the scenic view. Oh, that's cool. But uh, we incorporated it in the design, so you don't have to, to put another that's camera weird. somewhere yeah, that, that will block the view. That is brilliant. And so what is this do? I noticed there's a red light blinking in this it little... Is. Yeah, it's a word. I, I thought it was no, a handlebar, but it's not. The, ca the camera is seeing uh, an emergency braking coming up. Yeah. That will warning you that okay. something will happen. So okay. to prevent you and you can break and... Beautiful. Yeah. So it'll, it'll ah. flash and, and show something on the windshield. You know, heads up on the windshield. Yeah, yeah heads up display. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. It is a pleasure it and an honor, a Francois. Thank you for your it's time today. And uh, what a treat this is. Thank you, guys. All right. Just very excited for the launch of this product. It has gotten great reception so far. And uh, excited to see what the year brings for us all. So Awesome. And reach out to Keith. I'll put his uh, email down in the bottom. <laughs> That's this guy to... Hey, you're going to get some... You, get, you make commission, right? Sure. Uh, do I get some royalties now that I'm like... <laughs> I got it. Yep. Extra, extra ice in your soda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You I so appreciate much. your time. Thank, Thank you. You. <laughs> you are killing it. <laughs> well, guys and gals, I hope that answered a lot of your questions about Prevo as a company as well as the H345 bus itself. Also, folks, I'm actually headed out to Detroit, Michigan this upcoming Friday, February the 3rd, 2023, to attend Bus World, another convention for bus geeks and nerds. A whole new showroom full of bus and bus tech. So stay tuned for that video coming up in the near future. And if you happen to be going to Bus World yourself, well, I'll see you there. And remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.